Hey everybody, hope you're all having a good day. It's Monday on... Yeah, we weren't on this for an entire week, but we're back to it anyway. We're back to Hazard Perry. Unschedule, like I said, it was an unscheduled thing, but it's fine now. We're going to get back to this for a while. Last time, uh, we were talking to Yosugi, as per in the prosecution's office. And we have to go to the Forensic Set Investigation Office, I believe it was. Talk to uh, the Forensic Scientist, who was the... Uh, Murderer in the last case is daughter. So we're going to back to Twisted Comrade's last spot. Well, I'm literally trying to remember things here. So yeah, like I said, we finished talking to Yusugi. For rent, yeah, for I apparently were in a little bit, but I think I did a very good job of that. We, yeah, we examined everything here as well. This has been like the last part of the of the whole episode. Oh, this place changed. Second of November, forensic laboratory, forensic laboratory. This place really is creepy, isn't it? Well, being in that room, it's probably full of spirits of the deceased, of the, of the dissected. But actually, there's a rare please, pleasant scent of roses in the air. So being in that room, the coroner probably needs a full scent, scent like that to mask the odor of death. Um, Iris, do you think we could change the subject? Shink, 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 shink. What? What the, what's that? Shink, shink, shink. Dr. Gory? What? Um, not noise before. I was sharpening my tools. I'd be dead me that I didn't keep a proper, a perfect keen edge on them. Right. Been following the Colleen fabrics of the Therms, an, ex an expertly sharpened scalpel. Cuts like cheese. Would you like a demonstration? Oh, yes, please. I'd love to see. Yeah. I think you'll do nicely. Huh? No! No, I wouldn't do nicely at all. I mean, I need some more time. T Is that tough? Well, we came here to ask questions, so... This looks... different from before. Of course, Miss Arho. Miss Gory is a young maiden. She has all sorts of charming little dolls on like... on the like around her place of work. Look! Oh, yes, you're right. Perhaps she's not so strange out there all. There, there, high practice. Sorry? Mama always says that operations and dissection means require speed and accuracy. I take up my needles and fresh and stitch three new dolls every day. Ah, right. I used to make liver and ki livers or kidneys or intestines. But Mama told me to make something more friendly instead. That's quite different to what I imagined. Well, look at this. What a magnificent display kiss. The cherry wood has been polished to high sheen. And, and the, the entrenched carving is a joy to behold. Western cabinet 
weapons really mi really are very skilled, aren't they? It's ten people. Pardon? It's me from the bones of ten different people, all mixed together. Some of my best work. I was admiring the kiss, actually. The scary scout in the side is something that I tend to ignore as best I can. Or strange. I wonder who is the strangest. A table and set uh, set of sharp tools. When you consider each in isolation, oh, it all looks quite innocent. So why is it that when you put them side by side, it seems so hardly disturbing? It might be best not to ponder it too deeply. That's Mama's dissection table. It's too high for me, though. It, it is? If I fell from that height in my, help, my, my sleep, it would really hurt. What? You're... I mean, you sleep in here? Auto spy work is very involved. It's usually too late to think about going home when I'm... I have bad dreams when I sleep here, and I always end up falling onto the floor. So I like to exchange that table over. But I, sorry, I, so I like to exchange that table for a lower one. Maybe you should just go home. Look at that! Look at all those balls on the shelves in the cabinet. What an assortment of the chemicals! These ones here are labeled highly toxic. Ugh. That's worrying because there are other things that look like salt and pepper shakers here. Oh well, yes, and they actually say salt and pepper on them. The doctor probably spends a lot of time in this room, I suppose. Perhaps she has meals in here sometimes. Life goes on, even when you're surrounded by death. Oh. Those large jars seem to have peel things floating around inside them. I suppose they're fruit li liqueurs or something. Or like the pickled um, very bushy plums we make back home. Yes, let's assume there's something completely innocent like that. Ah, that's sure you looked up there contains monkey brains. Oh my. The composure is similar to the human brain. So they make for interesting study material. And in the next jar along, we have monkey. No, no, no! No more monkey anything! Please. You say so. Oh dear. The time when I still thought it was just some pickle. Well, let me be sheep plum. Um, seems so long ago already. I think that's, yeah, I think that's everything here. I mean, um, can I ask your opinion about this? Don't forget, you're responsible for putting my mom in jail. Why should I help you? Dr. Gory, we actually came here to ask you about this. He was very good. Good? Sorry? His skin didn't snag my blade once. And very little mist. His joints dislocated easily, and his muscle, muscle tissue was, pleasure, was a pleasure to work with. We can skip those details. But there's one thing about the report that caught my attention. You didn't see if it recorded time of death. Oh! That's not my fault. Oh! That made me jump. Then please, tell us what happened. 
Oh, that changed. We didn't. Oh, okay. So, why doesn't this all spy report include the victim's time of death then? It's really the most cr crucial detail. I was told not to write it. What? By whom? By L. Strongheart, the Lord Chief just. This. He came here. Lord Strongheart came? He said that from the witness statement about the gunshot on the other evidence. It was obvious. The man clearly died at 5 p.m. on 1st of November when the gunshot was heard. But that's not the time of death you wrote on the report. You didn't write anything. Was there some reason you didn't include it? Dr. Corey! You're hiding something under Lord Strongheart's instructions. And sooner or later, you're going to go the same way as your mother. Give it here, then. Hmm? Why is she struggling so furiously? Sir. You've written... What? What's your written? Tell us! And and determining it. What? Okay. What do you mean by that? Why is the time in that indeterminate? When the specimen was brought in, it was still fresh. The damn have could eat but so the time of death could be could, could easily have coincided with when the gunshot was heard. But there was one small discrepancy. What discrepancy? There was some fried fish in the pocket of the specimen's overcoat. And the fish has started to rot. What? The defectum liked fried fish. He presumably liked to eat it before it went off. Well, yes. What are you really trying to say? It's possible that someone tried to manipulate the apparent time of death. Manipulate the. Is that even possible to do? Theoretically, if you were to chill the body in ice, you could delay the onset of per perfection. And if the overcoat wasn't on the body at the time, then only the fish was, has started the rot. But today, science, it's not yet possible to determine if the body was chill or not. Today, science is advanced enough to let you freeze a corpse, it seems. Surely, chill cars like that would require an enormous electrical refrigerator. And I don't imagine many households in London are equipped with such a device. No, definitely not. But maybe in a factory. Or some other special place. I don't recall seeing any factories or such like in France or Surrey, though. I wonder. The inspector's body had been chilled somewhere. What might the actual time of death have been? I couldn't say for sure. But the most, it might have been a day earlier. No! In other words, if you collaborate your previous deduction, Mr. Narahodo, that Spectre Reason was killed the day before his body was discovered at a different location. Did you inform Lord Strongheart of this possibility? He simply said that there was no electrical refrigerator of that size in the vicinity. So, yeah, he could have been killed. Grayson most could have been killed there. Oh, yes, one other thing. It's something the governor of Barclay person told us. He said to your mother, Dr. Sibith, was responsible for the com confirmation of the death of the professor after his execution. The professor. 
apparently you always enjoy listening to your mother's stories about her work, so if you're wondering if you might know something about what happened 10 years ago. That's not all Mama did. Sorry? Hi, Mama. Carried out the auspi auspi autopsy of Clint Fan 6 as well. What? Really? Brother of Lord Fan 6. The professor's kind of victim. The idea of carrying out an autopsy on a member of the aristocracy was completely unthinkable back then. But the detective in charge of the investigation insisted and it was miraculously offer authorized. The tech that detective being Inspector Grayson, of course. Why do you accomplishment for one man? That auto spy provided a the final clue needed to arrest the killer. A mom was there for that historic event. What does this all mean? No, that amazing autopsy happened right here in this very room. The professor and Clint Van Seeks. They both spent their family moments before their burial on that dis dissection table there. So this lab, Mama's lab, was instrumental in some of the country's most important events. She really is proud of her mother. I wonder if you'll tell us more about exactly what happened back then, Dr. Rory. More info. The professor's execution was Mama's first big kiss. She had to be in attendance at Barclay Prison's execution chamber and signed the certification to confirm the convict's death. Mama is the big corner of the world, you know. I was so proud of her. But the execution didn't actually take place. No, and worse still, Mama actually helped with the jailbreak. I didn't want to know. Oh dear. I found out recently, you mean. I believed in her and Mama, but... I wonder if I start started down the same path as her. You mean because you admitted the, the time of death on this auto side report? But that's because Lord Strongheart forbade you from including it. Just like Mama. I'm sure she was coerced by somebody too. Yes, that's my feeling as well. There's no doubt that there was that there were powerful forces at play ten years ago. The execution couldn't have been staged without a lot of people at the prison knowing about it. Obviously, the prisoner governor must have been in on it as well. Big mom with the little handcuffs? According to what he told us, he was tricked by the chief warden. He said he knew nothing about it. Of course he said that. I'd say the same thing. Just who's behind that teal brick all those years ago? You mentioned the autopsy of Clint Van Six. It was at the time when carrying out the autopsy of murder for victims was very unusual. It's still not a practice that observes in her country, even now. It turned out that he was the professor's final victim, and when the autopsy was performed, Mama was present, although only as a secondary assistant. The person leading in the procedure was Dr. John Hitch Wilson. That's right, my daddy! And there was one other person present, the primary assailant, assistant. He was a physician student from the Far East. Wait, a physician student? Must have been my father, Yuji Mikutaba. I had no idea Professor Mikutaba had been involved in something so important. The outcome of that historic autopsy. 
What's the discovery of a final piece of evidence that led to the capture of the professor? That's how they came to identify Genji Nusugi as the infamous mass murderer. Do you have known anything about that piece of evidence? Can you tell us any more? Would you like to see the records for yourself? What? Would, would that be alright? What's the point of keeping records if people can't look at them? They're filed under fee at the back of those cupboards. With the other records from the last decade. Thank you. Let's see. And six. And six. Um, that's strange. What? Missing our hurdle. They, they aren't here. There's nothing on their fan seeks. There must be. Perhaps somebody took them away. No, no one's allowed to take documents related to the professor's case out of this room. But you're right. They're gone. Well, when's that time somebody looked at them? Do you remember? It was. Oh yes, I remember now. It was two years ago. A consulting detective came one day saying that he'd like to see the records. No, you, you don't mean. Herlock Jones was his name. Deep down, I knew that was coming. Do you think he stole the records? Oh no, surely not. Iris, that can't be right. Cannon? Uh, Iris? Um, Bruno? I hope you don't mind, bud. What is it, Iris? I just remember something very important I have to do. I'm gonna have to leave you now. Oh! That's very this is very sudden, Iris. Well, we'll come for you then. Oh no, 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 there's no need. You know you can take your time here. Bye for night, then. Good luck. She bolted very quickly. Wait a minute, little girl. M me? I remember now. You've been here before, haven't you? Have you, Iris? Yes, two years ago. When that detective came, you were with him, weren't you? You were a living specimen then too. That's the way it usually works. Yes. Was I? I I don't re I really don't remember. Hey, anyway, sorry, but I must dash. Wait, Iris. I'll bear a pot for you when you get home. Fury did bolt. What's the matter of her? She's behaving really strangely all of a sudden. Well, in that case, we won't keep you any longer either. It's been quite a while since I've had any visitors. This was really fun. The next thing you come, I prefer if you were ready for dissection. I can't make any promises. Sorry. It's a bit strange that the records of Clint Van Seek's autopsy has disappeared. I think we've... If that's all we came to ask now. Let's have a closer look at this. And again, let's nod. At least while she's armed. I guess we'll head back to the office to show him the suite, see if we can find Iris. Nope, she's off like a rocket. No idea where she is. Let's check out our places. Watch oh, Osuki. Let's talk to Osuki. Not here either. Where is everybody? Everyone 
just magically decide that now the time will go to other places? Ah, oh, never mind. We find the plot. Second of error, we're in Fenster Street. The police are so busily investigating. Sorry, bush busily investigating and hear that. But she has nobody to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it's been it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's investigating on her own, practicing what her boss told her. Well, I'll be. I expect she'll be back before long, too long. So, whip. Actually. Mm -hmm. There's something different about this room since the last we were here, isn't there? We could actually just have the effects get thoroughly. More thoroughly. Whoops. Hey, that box wasn't there. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh! Game hits me, me and Mel! It must be very heavy! I wonder to whom it belongs. There's some there are some initials on the other side. Look, T G. That's just one of the policemen. I didn't know how he came to be here. Oi! What do you think you're doing? That's me, Trunk. Trunk, that is. Hands off. Gina. What? What were you hiding? I don't know. You need something unintended for a few seconds. And every Tom, Dick, and I. You guys, look at your eyes on it. Um, it's about to catch you, but. What? Well, spit it out, Odo. Is the part to say that you only own this chunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Go on! This chunk scuff goes with me everywhere. Oh, it does. Where have you been last year? I'm not to her your wrath, mainly. Did you hear him talking about talking that they are now? Edge be ashamed of themselves. Also themselves. They're saying that I was the boss who killed. All them bugless. Bugless. Ah, you mean the whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently, the boss was investigating stuff of that no one else in the yard knew nothing about. Stuff to do with all them criminals walk off scot free. Yes, the ones prosecuted by Lorfan seeks to use bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well then, obviously, it was a blooming reaper! Not given the orders, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't it? Wasn't it? But, why would people be suspecting Inspector Grayson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook at, in his office. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. It, I did it. it was with all the crimes that had been pegged as the Reapers to work. What? No, did you see it, Gina? Did you see that notebook? They wouldn't let me, let me, let me. Cause I'm just an apprentice apparently. But it was me, Ferdinand, and I was my boss. That's right. I was pretty miffed about it, so... I sneaked a peek of what I said anyway. Oh! That's our Gina.
So, you managed to see what was written in Grayson's secret notebook anyway, did you? But yeah, I see it. It's my right to read what you wrote. Um, what? Um, what? How do you read, Gina? It's times, places, names. A long, long list of them. All these about the book. Look, like supposed to have to been done in by the Reaper. But, there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps it was to record the, of the investigations investigation into the Reaper's activities. Exactly! That's what I said! That's the first thing you think, right? And it happens, it was fully into recognized anyway. Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of the London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean? I'm pretty sure it was the end of the again. I'm pretty sure the date against it was 31st of October. Oh! The day before the inspector was found dead. So, what's the odd name? What was the odd name? It wasn't like the name a name I've seen before. It was something like, um, nah, it's no good. I can't remember it. I don't think it was an English name, and put it that way. Oh dear, what a pity. There was something else too. I don't know what matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. Shin, was it? Don't suppose it means anything, but... Did you say... Shin? Eh? What? It does mean something? Orphan Six knew the name too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. Now we find her, her name appeared in Grayson's secret notebook. We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? Well, of course not. I've been busy, ain't I? Let's get into that. The lads at the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. It happened. The day before. That would be the undercover investigation into the Red-Headed League, then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? You found some cove what was pretending to be him, didn't you, Odo? Yes, it was Mr. Fig. I forgot that. Had, who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing as per as Grayson. How about? Well, anyway. You ain't the only one turning stuff up. I got my own ways of getting results. We me and me part. They're together. There's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby! He's such a faithful friend. So, have you tracked anything down then? What do you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you though. Police business, ain't it? Uh. Anyway, the point is, if you've not ever need uh, any help. You know who to turn to, right? Me, my in here. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish. Honest. Honest. Um, Gina, I'll bet you're a hellhound there. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the bride of the force he is. In in Japanese, police dogs mean something quite different. Although not altogether nice to those involved in crimes. And here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment it seems. For a canine at least. It should be, after all. And the great acts a bit. In case the other day, it was Toby here who ma 
Needs to locate Dabber's workhouse. Workhouse. Workshop. Damn it. Maybe it's another time for another demonstration of what, I, what this super dog can do, eh? Do you have anything the Chief Inspector could catch the scent of, I wonder? Well, Chief Inspector Hobie, if you wouldn't mind having a sniff of this. It might be a little too keen, don't you think? Like I didn't, I didn't. Wait a minute. Ah, whoops! The Chief Inspector, I'm sure because you know there. Ah! Look what it's gone to. Oh my, that trunk clearly has a very strong scent. From Inspector Grayson. In other words, this must have belonged to him. Oh, alright. It's a fair cop, I suppose. And you nearly got away with it, too. He always talks so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose when. It and what I can achieve. Did it not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? Yeah, that was a bit of a blur, wasn't it? Weren't it? That's enough night, didn't Gina. Eh? I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. It, it weren't like that. It just weren't. What are you talking about? I know what's going going for your head of yours. But it, what but it ain't what happened. Alright then. What did happen? Well, like I said before, we are trying to chase the boss's movements. But to be you have a whiff of the but the boss is overcoat. As soon as it's out, he went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. It's to a sandwich? Not a bag of chips? Listen, I heard of. I didn't mean. I think I didn't mean to witness this. Oh. I forgot about that sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, in between them wooden boards of his the boss's trunk. You mean when they heard the sound of a gunshot I'm well pad in here? Exactly. Ain't nothing from the scene. Goodness. Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling. And you know what he said. I I thought Patrick could price and the shop wouldn't be needed anymore, so Alright. But that's all I did. Nothing more, nothing less. Would you Adam and Eve to check the cheek of it, eh? Stealing the dead boss's stuffed up log. The Miss Fee wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime then. How could they? Hey, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent trunk. So I think I might as well make use of it. Is there something without eh? Well, Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try and find the answer to that question together. I think perhaps the trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you talking about? I am the police! Yeah? If you wouldn't mind, 
Min memory is hamlet. Yeah. All right, then. Do what you want with it. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our ex examination of the evidence. What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting so aggressive towards me all of a sudden? Be careful, Mr. Hurt, be careful! It must be the trunk! Ah! Toby, oi! What are you doing? I'm gonna lick its face off! But hang on, it's just a scratch there! Have you seen the huge, this huge scratch inside the trunk here? It's going right through the ladder right into the mail behind. Gosh, for a mountain case like that to have spin so badly dummies. Whatever in that gosh must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. Wonder how it happened. Oh dear. Got the dark stain here, don't you think? It's our face, so it's blood. Uh, I knew you were gonna say that. So that presumably means this is present that the single inspector Chris was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. I think Gina's been carrying this around with her. I didn't know any better. It does look like a grease stick from, from all the fish and chips. From all the fish and chips. Let's have a look inside. Hmm. Look, there's something inside. Ooh, let's see. There appears to be a password. I'll present him to travel overseas. Was Inspector, Tristan, was Inspector Grayson about to go on a trip abroad then? Eh? Perhaps the idea of the departure might tell us something. That was... Oh! What is it? It was... It was for travel on the 31st of war. Just one day before the incident. What? Really? Grayson went to France the day before his body was discovered. I think that's all. Yep. Oh, we think we can sign on the passport. The end to pass Grayson, passport number ACD0522. The departure within one week. From first thirty first of October. Destination Port Dunkirk, France. Purpose of traveling, place of business, note permission from the applicant and one additional person to travel. Mr. Horu! Mr. Horu! You know, quickly, hail the carriage! Second November. 4.57 p.m. I heard it was legal consult Oh, Mr. Haru, are you alright? Miss Usano? Ah! Punches again at last! A play it's a relief, my dear fellow! After all, he dropped dead after a month when her licking by a small terrier. Most unseemly. <laughs> Ouch. What is or isn't seemly is irrelevant here, Mr. Sholmes. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Thank you, did Bring me back here. Ah, what's this on my head? 
Not on leech. Sadly, we had no ice. There's a compress of sugar water. Sugar water. Don't worry, Mr. Naruto. It's a first aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So, let us take tea when you're feeling up to it. Of course. No sugar in the patient's cup. Uh, the bottom of my head is throbbing sweatly enough. Don't worry. Weakly enough. Don't worry. <laughs> Not really, you feel really then. Um, thank you for your concern, Mr. Sholmes. My dear fellow, think nothing of it. I must say, I was quite startled. When I heard that you've been attacked by a dog. For a moment, I fear that if Miss Murr, there are so many, and you have come back from the dead. You mean, the professor? Fortunately, I see your prize frozen scathed. That stiff, turned-up color of yours obviously afforded some welcome protection. Like that close to death? All I remember is the dog licking my face over and over again. Over and over and over again. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in the future, a little mustard spread on the cheek should do the trick. I should think that that will balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. Or something I could get in this, but I don't know. I'm not gonna check it off. Like, I don't think I can do anything here, so let's just talk to Iris. Are you alright, Mr. Rahoro? It's rather unusual to find ourselves in the middle of our investigation. It, it just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry, as long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go far wrong. Oh! Uh, yes, of course. I must get back to work as soon as possible. Where's Sheena? I hear her music, but I don't... Gina, I'm really sorry. It's not finished. He asked me a year ago, the cops could go away. Going, going on with her. Going on with her. But we got our police, thank me. Catch the burglars. The vestibulars can go about their business in peace. A bit sorry? I, I don't think I can ha I can have heard that properly. Dad was going to teach me everything I need to know, know uh, to be a detective. That's all I got. But all I got to show. Run to show me is where the best Fleming fish and chip shops are. Actually, that reminds me. Prison said he was supposed to be going to Paris in the near future, didn't he? Is something wrong? Oh, no. I'm sure I mean too much into things. It's just that the timing seems very coincidental. Hmm? No, the boss was acting a bit strange recently. Like he was in a rush. Oh, there we go. I did not realize that was... I didn't think it was that. I just wanted to see if Gina had anything different to say. Here. Lara's here, yet... Yes! Things are happening. Like November, Shooms is sweet. Modelnd wie ein Feuerberg, 
bin schlund es mir verbrannt, ach Hopfen, deine Wut. Her mit dem What the hell? Fall hat wie ein What on earth is going on here? I have a bad dream? It's that body on the floor on the What? Ah oh, no! It's an old German folk song! Better in rendition, I think. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris? Iris, what's the matter? Um, who's that sprawling, I mean, last gentleman over there? Iris, um, is she even listening? Excuse me, sir! I do apologize for telling you whilst you're singing so merrily, but... Would you be kind enough to explain the situation? Well, that worked. A crooning gentleman and a mute young girl. A rather tantalizing j just t just have position. And one that appears to have incited the gods of the duction within me to find the verdict. Find the forces too. Ah, Mr. Jones, you do do you mean even the Irish reacted? Strains of racing with me are playing now as a delightful duet. When Melly sings a reunion full of nostalgia. Whilst the other is a morse theme about a great secret you try so desperately to conceal, Iris. She keeps she turned white as a sheet. So as usual, he, inst he instantly seemed to the seemed to the very heart of the manor. And by the time my own my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will reach its finale. So then, to music land, where all the sweetness and delicacy of and harmony. Pray, do enjoy Halak Jones's latest logic and reasoning spectacle. The game is afoot. And identity. Firstly, we must consider this gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evident by the dramatic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when asked to deceased. So, why is the man here at all? And in such apparent high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you! Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for this man's madly irritation and war is revealed by the herbal tea! You obviously offered our German guests a cup of your latest herbal blend! He's the Delectable flavor has made the man's spirit soar and resulted in this joyful the tumbling insensibly from his lips. I eagerly await sampling this flavor myself, that I may join the fellow in a state of elations. Mm. Now to the next question. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly on the city? As it happens, a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particular delicate case. We required the retrieval of, a, of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proven problematic. 
In order to conceal his no identity, he also arrived in my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gr Grosseresh Sigismund von Or Ornstern. I'm pretty sure I got some part of that name wrong. The King of Germany! My memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question. That mask belongs to the King of Germany. It appears that his magic remembers the fine service I afforded him. And has decided to show his face again, mask it all, in order to raise his gratitude. A well mannered monarch indeed! Wouldn't you agree, my dear fellows? So the identity of this masked wizard is in fact my former client, the King of Germany! Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. The King of Germany? Two. Girls, silence. Which leaves us with one remaining pump. Ponder a bone. Yes, you, young Iris. But your apparently in its inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that napkin. A five pound note, I believe. I must say, as a period, I'm deeply saddened. It would appear that, that you've allowed yourself to be bribed to the silence by His Royal Highness. Earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the King's secret. Mm. Now, a final piece of the puzzle. What is the secret you strive to hide in your, with your silence, Iris? Ah yes, we need only follow your brief and follow her twitch in your eyes to find the answer. You're attempting to ascond with that coffee cup. Coffee cup. My favorite coffee, coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup. It appears that his high spirited highness broke it in, in the midst of his high, 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 high jinks. Damn it. Which leads us to the sad truth. My favorite comic cup has been broken by the King of Germany! And Iris, you're trying to conceal it from me! I shall have a bill set via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. I hide the coffee cup. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this painful puzzle. <laughs> I was not really ready to come back to the song. Sorry to laugh. It just, it just doesn't fit the mood. With your silence as well. The joyful juvenile warm ring rather rings in its ear. Does it not? Uh, um, Mr. Shones? I must say something does rather trouble me. Hey, Mr. Sano, do hell! His Royal Highness doesn't appear to have moved the muscles since we arrived. Ah! And you haven't said a word either, Iris. If Mr. Schumann has it all right, you might as well owe up to it now. Wait. That can't be. Your reason isn't entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Shooms. Is another grievance missing our hurdle? Surely not. Well, I actually read the story that case recently. 
the one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the king of Germany, but the king of Bohemia. Oh, sorry, it was the king of Bohemia. Goodness, was it? Yes, that's quite true. Master Gutz, the pr prince testified that in court to that in corn. In his words, I have come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourself. It could easily have become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Narhoro, that our tree. That's our turn to make some corrections to the number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Yes, even Mr. Shrooms is willing to admit he might be slightly why made the mark this time. Although it's clear that Iris def is definitely hiding something. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. The one truth is inconceivable. My favorite cup of cup is no more. So, shall we embark again? On the joint presentation of Horak Shumsen's logic and reason spectacle. First correction. Hold it! Mr. Shomes. Mountain Density, Topic 1. Conclusion King of Germany. Not really. Firstly, we must consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the dramatic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand what's being asked to desist. Why? So, why is the man here at all and in such apparent high spirits? Uh, answer, of course, Iris is clearly known to you. Oh, is that Mikotaba? Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of of those bright young eyes and unravel this particular that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritated watering is revealed by the herbal tea. So what? It's a mix of herbs that give you the urge to sing? Goodness! I should like to try some. And I like to hear you singing. And I'd like to hear you singing, but this man. How long does he intend to keep up with that tune, do you suppose? I said, he's been stuck still the entire time, and if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. Ah! So I'm not sure what's exactly actually responsible for that spirit of singing. I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris' career is. Wait, this is a gramophone. It's still rarely seen in our own country. It certainly appears to be coming from the horn. But the machine's singing! That, that can't be right. Science and technology are changing the world rapidly, Mr. Arhoto. What's right is changing, too. Uh, too much for my brain. Well, at least we found our answer. We, we know this mask. Oh, you're right. So, does that I mean, no, surely not. It couldn't be. Could it? No, it's most definitely not him. Oh, no, of course not. My goodness. But then, why is this gentleman night warning you? I'm afraid once again, I really have no idea. The reason for this man's mildly irritated warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Indeed! A no well bred gentleman could break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. I'd be surprised if that actually had happened. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, it appeared that this fellow is unconscious.
Ah, the music seems to have stopped now. I ask you, Ms. Naraholo. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? How should I know? Well, never mind. On with the deduction. Who exactly is this gentleman himself so fully of the city? This happens a number of years ago now. A certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particular delicate case. He acquired a retrieval of letters one sent into an acquaintance that might have proven problematic. In order to conceal his no identity, he also arrived in my office at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name is Wilhelm Gorosh Stig Stig Stigismond von Orsting. The King of Germany! In my honor serves that mask form of this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question. This mask belongs to the King of Germany. Though we've already established that it was actually the King of Bohemia. Seems Mr. Jones intends to persist with his German Germany fairy for some reason. To think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Mr. Gods, the boy whom, whom you had in tears, don't remind me or anyone else. Do you suppose all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear masks? I'm sure they do. Well, probably. Anyway. The point is, the mask doesn't belong to any king. No, that's right. As you well know, because we can identify the true owner of this mask. Where is it? Take that! Yes, there can be no question. This mask belongs to Asugi Gen Kazuma Asugi. Other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. <laughs> Only you could try to make it so that's so positive. Cosmo's mask has been languishing onto his mouth chest for several days. It has it? Though that doesn't explain why this gentleman is wearing it now. But it is now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. At all, the gentleman is unconscious. We need only excuse ourselves in offense. Gently lift the mask and peer behind it. I, I don't believe it. Ah! Father! I'm afraid, Mr. Zano, you must be mistaken. No! I think not, Mr. Sholmes. Then it will appear our logic and reasoning have once again revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor. Huh? It's my unconscious father, Yuji Mikotaba. Logic and reasoning? Or just looking insane? Yujin Mikotaba. Solved. Ooh. Which leaves us with one remaining impo imponderable. It's you, young Iris. But you're apparently in this inexplicable silence. It's only able to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your mutinous is concealed in that napkin. So that's a five-pound note poking out of Iris' napkin. Is it? Oh dear. Can't be so sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. I know, I'm not even sure if we've seen any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? Anyway, 
Father would never have paid any money in our asylum. He certainly seemed like the silent type himself, though. Judging by his present state. There must be some other reason for Iris' silent, I suppose. Perhaps what Iris is so trying so hard not to give away to her eyes is something entirely different. Now there's only two options. Yeah, only two options is that are knapsack or a melt chest that contains important documents, doesn't it? Yes, details of all cases saw Mr. Jones has spoken of over the years. Written up by our spotter. If I remember correctly, Iris insisted that the chest is kept locked at all times. He's never once shown me inside. Well, his contents are invaluable to her, I suppose, and entirely irreplaceable. Look at that nigh. The ha catch is unlocked for once. <laughs> this. That's hard to ignore. Well, Barry. I've never seen that chest unlocked before. In all the time we've been staying here, Baker Street. Sorry, Iris. Gotta do, Take that. Gotta do this. Yes, the reason for your meekness is concealed inside that metal chest. An excellent observation. For well, upon closer inspection, there is something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times. Now, the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. It's a simple enough to, but it's, it's a simple enough matter to incite you to speak. I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Here we go. No, hurry down. <laughs> oh shit! Mr. Shows has been knocked out! He's dead. Never! Oh, hey. I told you not to open it. Ah! You found your voice now, Iris! Oh, yeah, right. You probably recovered that. Mr. Shows! Mr. Shows! Hurry! Very much not, Iris. Ah! In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for his hands until now is. This is somewhat different from the usual dance of the deduction you performed, Mr. Shum, isn't it? Well, he left me alone on the ballroom floor, so I'm gonna have to dance this next part solo. And anyway, I need to get to the bonus for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet, despite knowing the po point of the finger before? Mrs. Anno, sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh, well, if you say so. I think we better summon Iris more closely and try to rescue the situation then. For some reason, this knapsack really stop starting uh, sounding uh, as suspicious to me today. Oh, is it? It's quite sizable enough for a sizable secret. That's what I say. Perhaps it is. We can't open it up to look inside with our suspicion. No, you're right. Who knows what might pop up and punch us? That's a key she's holding! Look! I'm sure that wasn't her house before, was it? No, you're quite right. It appears as if I'm... as if I'm magic. 
That's strange. A big old iron key. Where did that materialize from? Take that! Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. Ah! Huh. Mr. Jones was thrown into the air before. Just before you call out to try to stop him, you slip something out of your mouth. That something is the key in your hands. No doubt the key to the chest. You're so... You're so clever, Bruno. So now it's become clear. Thanks for the this gruff big demonstration. We can now imagine what happened here. But... Professor Mikatawa opened that metal chest only to have been punched into the air. And landed sprawling on the sea. But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the side of the scarf and a cup of tea? And above all, why would he be wearing Cosmo Sama's mask? Well, for those curious details, I can pick up only one explanation. An unbelievable miracle took place in the spring. Isn't that right, Iris? Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Prof Professor Rico Taba opened the chest, completely unaware of what we did him inside, the mass was flung in the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when he fell back when it fell back down. The teacup a journey for the club for the earth and did when it was caught by the unconscious professor's fingers. You, you mean to say that the salad scarf is actually the tablecloth? This is the great deduction detectives always after all. I'll play some miraculous deductions. Would you expect anything less? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. Brilliant, Bruno! This concludes. Bruno sucks. It's like a script deduction of this punchy puzzle. <laughs> then, why did. Why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? Objection! An admirable performance, Mr. Arahodo. Wow, he recovered fast. But the final act of the show there. You rather missed everything of importance. But in the final act of the show there, you missed you rather missed everything of importance. Mr. Shones? If you catch your mind back to my earlier deduction... Iris, you're clearly hiding a great secret! Ah! He is? And what's her face? Mrs. Jones must be right! Whatever that great secret is, the cat isn't in the bag yet. So I'll put it to you again. You are attempting to have gone with that coffee cup. It's really a shame about Mr. Shrooms' cup. It must have been smashed when the Professor Mik when Professor Mikatama opened the chest. Oh dear. So many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduction has been taken has taken a different direction, Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observation skills to work here one final time then. What the? Okay, let's look around.
clearly something. Oh, that poor cup. I'm looking around, I'm looking around. I'm clear. Oh. Surely this time at last the next act is going to be the answer. I'm really not sure why you intend to show your arrows back to the plant in these events. Because it's a sizable bag enough for sizable enough to carry things to run, Mr. Naruto. Let's go back to four. So the next act might never see the line like you mean. I really wouldn't like to say. Cut. Nope. Never sank in the sneak ways. So I'm hiding it somewhere. As far as I can tell. Oh, she led me to opinion here. Well, much like the bag, your deduction doesn't want but they fell out. That wasn't. I was suggesting she was trying to make up a bag full of water. Indeed, that would be madness. You were nearly com- I think. Determined that you could be suited to see by a 10 year old girl, I think. I don't think it was only me. No, you're right. I think what well, Iris is hiding must have been extremely important somehow. Don't you? Yes, we're so close now. It's great deductions within our grass, I'm sure. Oh! Ah, oh, look! There, there seems to be some paper there. I I missed that. Oh, that thing, no way. Is I trying to hide something underneath the tray? Is it It's the off. It's an official Scotland Yard document. What? But why would Iris have? You must ask her. An official Scotland Yard document. Take that! You were attempting the escort, and with the kiss, with that kiss file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing skips the attention of the great detective. Oh no! We visited in Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory er, in order today. And Dr. Gorey informed us that the Osprey report of Clint Van Six has gone missing. Clint Van Six? Hmm, yes, I do seem to recall. That some years ago, I asked to see the reports in question. You're with me, weren't you, Iris? I, I. You mean it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Hide the kiss files. Oh. Deduction complete. Elementary! And sure. I would like to have... Thought that. 
I could have predicted this booby trap to chest. Bill called me completely off guard. I was far nearly the late consulting detective Herlock Jones. Uh, I'm sorry, Herlock. Do you mean this autopsy report really is? Yes, I took it from the lab. Even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Yaris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I've been looking for. When I saw the report, I saw the red nod. I knew it was Daddy's. The writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? Iris. Must be something that hard for her to talk about. You gave me Rented Ruddy, my dear fellows. Mr. Shomes, what is it? I feel, so the I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the tea has got has been somewhat forgotten. Uh, father! Perhaps we should find our guests somewhere more peaceful to rest. Senator Hodo? Yes? Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? Must do Must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. So will I. No, no, I can manage alone. Thank you. You have tea to enjoy. You want I we would want Iris to brew, brew to stew. Because there's no better way to make a professor the professor comfortable than dragging him up the stairs like a trunk. I wonder perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Shones is being himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. You must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. I don't know what's going on. What would you like to tell us about it? Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That dad used to be Huey's partner? Yes, and that notes about the, all the kisses they sold together were kept inside that metal chest. That's right, Huey told me, you see. He said that daddy's somewhere far away now. We can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read for the papers inside, I started to build up a picture of what I had what that must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl in your age, though. But there was one thing that I never find out. Daddy's name. Ah. His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he made about his work with Huey. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? You saw his autopsy report. Family minds don't work it out. Is that right? Yes. So it was the handwritten in handwriting in the report that caught her eye. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. 
I knew that Harain. I thought to myself. Because it was the same as the writing you seen on your father's kiss notes. Exactly. I was so desperate to compare them to, to properly, I need to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the reports away. Even worse, I was told that that the first and last time we'd be allowed to even look at the dark. She decided to steal it. When I compared the outside report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt that Hanrain was exactly the same. It was that is. The second year of the corner at the bottom of the Allspire report. Read Dr. John H. Wilson. But that's how I finally found out. I learned Dolly's name and lost. I see. Ever since then, I call myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea. Ryan's story is all about Daddy's exciting times with Pee Wee. I said during then that I write the adventure of Herlock Jones. Oh, Iris. I had no idea the stories had such a deep personal significance for you. I can see why the All Star Report was so important to her now. Why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on. I must apologize, Iris. This is really all my fault. Okay. I made a promise, you see? That until the time is right. I keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the all side report back to Dr. Gory and apologize. I promise. Yes. We'll all go together, I think. Then let me look after for you until we got there. We get there. I'm at school. What are my herbs? I think. I see you all later. Poor Iris. Seems to be feeling awful. I know Mr. Shums is here for her. Still. Ah! What? Hi. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Shums? Mr. Shums? Oh dear me. So, you noticed, I see. But that that would mean. What on earth's the matter, Mr. Sano? Turned white as a sheet. Also, we might have a little time on this one. All spy reports. Corner Dr. Jordan Hinch Wilson. Me and Kurt Pond. Next meal, age 33, nationality British. Time of death, 31st of May, between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observation Death from a single stop wound to the heart. Other superficial external wounds include in the hit in a, of a duel. Additional notes: recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document in corresponding ink was found. Also, my ending: vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Credit for Inspector Grayson for petitioning to Doki, fortunately for the Allspire product procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. 
Interesting. If this, it's this all spy report from Sarahuru. The one from 10 years ago. The writing isn't Dr. Wilson's at all. Huh? What do you mean? Did you possibly knew not? Because I knew his writing very well. This writing. It's my father's. What? Professor Mikotabas? Indeed, it's true. And now you know, my dear fellows. No, I don't do anything. Wonder if this is all me, Mr. Shooms. But the idea that slowly formed in my mind. It's too extraordinary to believe. Please, you have to explain. So, this all spy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotaba then? But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Not possible, my dear fellows? Pray, take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it's actually it makes a great deal of sense. It does? Ten years ago is when my father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Pikutaba engaged? Oh, of course! He was an assistant to Dr. in Dr. Watson's lab, learning by forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the with the dissection work, making detailed notes. Which would be assembled into a full Osmite report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put a signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Jo Dr. Wilson in the report would be his signature at the end. See? The iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? You saw that? I assume the whole report had been written by Dr. John Hitch Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. Alright. Thinking about it. About it. Most of what we know about you, Mr. Shones, comes from the published stories of your ex exploits. Yes, the adventure of Herak Shones. Um. Yes, the adventure of Herak Shones, written by Iris. And we really have no way of knowing. What's facts and what's fiction? Most troubling for you, my dear fellows, I'm sure. What about this supposed partner of yours? Does he really exist or not? Ah, you come straight to the point, I see. Please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris is playing the one center in installment install installments. He was a chess of comma and the only person that I could truly call have called a friend. And did this part of yours really make a record of all your cases? Are her sons really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madame. Absolutely. So where's your partner and I? We rarely meet. See, he lives on the other side of the world. Is 
Now, if this also I report on the record of your old cases were penned by the same Han, and then the also I report was written, though not signed, by your famous partner, there will be only one logical conclusion. Alright, press me. Your partner would have been Yujin Mikutawa. In other words, Mr. San's father. Oh my word, Miss Naruhodo. Yes. <clears throat> you are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. <clears throat> You finally grasped the auto deduction. <clears throat> you you mean to say? Well, let me introduce you to my great friend and partner, Mikutaba. Professor Mikutaba? Does does this mean? That you're the real Dr. Wilson? No, 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 my dear. I'm so me yourself, Yuji Mikataba, your father. Oh, oh, of course. This is obviously too much for Susana's time to take in. I must say, though. <laughs> Hi, my old friend has attained worldwide salary as the great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. And I still remember the first time we met. Haha, <laughs> pray remind me. Name's on again, Mikataba? 16 years ago, Shones. Ah, uh, yes, quite. 16 years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Shinshiro and Genjin. I was in search of lodging close to the hospital. It's uncomfortable rooms at a reasonable price. The rents were are devilishly high at that particular area. That's right. So I decided that I needed someone to share lodging on the expense. I was fortunate enough to be introduced to Shones when he found himself in a similar situation. I was a kind of fellow back then. I mean, shut up with the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital chemistry laboratory at the and I'm indulging my curiosity for a little game. And the situation of our collaboration co led us to pursue cases together, you see. Hard to believe it was a mere six years. We had many great we had a grip many adventures. But in the last year, we could help us stay in Britain. That most infamous of cases presented itself. Kiss with she should become rather familiar herself. The professor's killings. I thought it shall. Since Sierra and I are summoned back home. <laughs> Hardly surprising, given the circumstances. There you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusty crown Conagher yours remained in that metal chest. That is, this is just amazing. Professor Mikotawa really is Mr. Shumis' famous partner. Honor? Goodness, my dear. What a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you were the great detective's great partner. Nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And that is... You know very well what it is. The almost a matter of Iris' father. Ah, of course. I was forgotten about that one. I should have seen this coming, I suppose. I 
Aristotle's. The only ones with the great detectives Avengers were in that or that are in that mouth, yes. Written by her father. It's not correct, Mr. Jones. That's indeed what I told young Iris. If you're Mr. Jones's partner, father, and you wrote all those kids' notes, then Iris's father must be you! Ah! Oh my word, Mr. Sonic. You're coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally got the other deduction. What? What you always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's car while she embarked on your slave tour in Britain. And I all accepted that, but all this about Iris. Oof, there it is. Susano's ice cold star. I no hold on, I hold on a minute. It it was very complicated. I mean it it's really not what you think. That perhaps you might you like to explain exactly what it is? There it is. Now from the eye uh, from the ice cold from cold ice cold to red hot just before she Not really, you you got the wrong side of sick. Show him, say something, man. He's got the coat on already. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. Mr. Sholmes! When did he get all dressed up? Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past, you tell me I have an urgent matter that requires short excursion. Let's fire leave, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madame? Is that not obvious? Me and my partner and I must be sure our natural enemies. So, get your coat, Mitikataba. The game is afoot! Shooms. I must get Susano a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellows. Later. A carriage awaits downstairs already. You haven't changed one iota. Then have you? I mean, really. I visited her home after 10 long years. And when I open that chest and fit it with nostalgia, I get this <laughs> we passed out. And as if that wasn't enough, when I fancy being conscious, I'm plunged straight in all this. Honor, please. Go, Mr. Shrooms now. What? I I I've no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interest. I trust you completely. Susano. And sending the great detective and script partner off on renewed adventures together? It's more than I could ever could have hoped for in my wildest dreams. Very well then. We'll speak again later. So, I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best luck for tomorrow. Yes, Naruhoro. Good luck in the battle. And in reaching a decision. Decision? But why do go back to Japan, I suppose? So much happened that day that I barely knew what to do with myself. It would only be later that I'd come to realize how amidst the chaos I'd unleashed were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth. And that all the turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to see everything through. Oh, that's the end of episode four. We have time. We'll do a little bit more. We'll go into the last episode. The ones who actually started an episode. The resolve for Freedom Saki. He now heard of. Final chapter.
Nice right, so while. Final chapter. The resolve of Rinosaki Narohoro. Probably mess that up. Still the same child, by the way. <laughs> Burden of November, 9.14 a.m. The old Billy defendants on the chamber. So, the time's finally come. Today, we unravel everything. I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Mr. Susano. Um, Ms. Susano? Ah! Oh no! What's the matter, Mr. Susano? Um, nothing. I was just saying that I'll be rather than your support today, but... I'm so sorry! Of course! I know. I I know I can be rather coming at times, but... I shan't let you down. Would you mind helping me to my feet then? Oh dear, I'm really sorry. Sansan isn't using self law. Before we do that, I want to change costumes for this time around. Let's see the last episode on a little bit of a fun note. Oh, here I just. Oh, okay. Just safe, so that's fine. Some special content, wasn't it? Yeah. As well. That's hardly surprising, I suppose. She just found out that her father is the partner is the partner of the world's famous detective. Not to mention. Uh, good morning, sir. Lord found six. Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. Did I hear that correctly? What? Oh, um, no, nothing. Just. I hope we can clear things up today. Very can't pick this man night. His fist says, I hit you. The swords are almost joyful today. In fact, he hasn't been very brutal like at all since it all began yesterday. Lord Fan seeks isn't the Reaper, Mr. Narahodo. Good point. A Reaper? I suppose in hindsight. I shouldn't have allowed the misconception to go unchallenged. But that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tactus acceptance of that Buddhism. Buddhism. My failure to stop the Reaper had become something more than a mere legend that led to all this. You're not, but you're not to blame for all that, Lord Fan Six. It's only because it's only because serious crimes in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why he didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank, I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. That have been that having been slain by that evil killer, Flint's restless spirit returned as some sort of demigod to wield a deadly blade of justice where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we heard that story too. When I lost him, I felt as though I lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel his absence a little less keenly.
Even if I knew it was just an illusion. Just some nonsense conjured up by an over-imaginative public. He was obviously extremely important to you. Lord, Lord Clint Van Seeks. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. It's all that matters. I I know you didn't take anyone's life. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this. But I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all lo the lies and deception. I cannot deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Thank you. Now tell me. Why did I detect a sense of expensive tea leaves in the air? Oh, Iris! When did you get here? Oh! Ah, um... I brought you one of my special blends. Jimmy loves it. He says it helps him clear his, he his head. I thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's surely the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. You seem different today, Iris. Oh. Sort of. Dude. I suppose. I am not! What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. Clearly, she's very, she's clearly very troubled about having stolen not all this by report from Dr. Savage's laboratory. Alright then, good luck to you both! I have to make a move now. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you want to watch today's proce proceedings. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Ready? For what? Oh, yes. Would you... Would you take this? Isn't that one of the little felt... Most that's unusually dangling from your knapsack? Yep! It's a lucky charm. Hello? The Huey that I made once. Huey? Looks more like a Harry to me. If for some reason you're completely out of options in today's trial today, in the trial today, just pull. Then just pull this Huey's ear. This little Huey's ears as hard as you possibly can. What? Pull his ears? That's right. It's a way of bringing good luck. I think you might need it. Interesting. You think? Oh, we'll need this luck. Oh. We have all the evidence. Yeah, because it's a continuation. We have all of the evidence from the past trial. Three pages worth. We did not. It's charming little Robbie version, Mr. Shooms. Do you suppose this is high hour season? Are you alright, Mr. Naruto? Your eyes look for. Hardly bull into the po with all size. Oh, sorry, I was just wondering. Which is supposed to happen if I were to tug its ears with all my might not. I'm sure that we'll find out when the time is right. To become a proper gentleman, you must you really must learn stoic patience. I wanna know That's amazingly detailed. Oh, Iris. I just sneak peek inside the inside the courtroom, and it seems very different to normal. Yes, it would seem that a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What's that mean? What about Mr. Shooms, Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and hasn't come home by the time I left this morning. Oh, 
I see. So we're faster make a tower at all night too? You think, Mr. Sano? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. And apparently they didn't come back in the rooms last night at all. Hey? Father, I'm just Jujutsu Goku. I mean, just Jujutsu Goku too? That's right. No one appears to have been seen either of them since yesterday. Pencil for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. Please make your way to the inside the courtroom at once. Good luck, Denver. No, good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper. I hope it goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very smooing. Oh, I'm so glad. We must go inside now. Or fan six. <laughs> Guess it's time to go fight the Lord Fan Six has always been a formidable prosecution formidable prosecution I had to lock horns with in court. But not today. Today, I bow with another pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Asma Asuki, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. Now I understand what it is that drove me here to print all those months ago. Now I know exactly what Destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day, to this one trial, to this one final reckoning. Erb November, 9.30 a.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. Feels even more impressive here than it did yesterday. Who starts piercing me like knives from all sides today? Ah! Missing our home! Look! Lord Strongheart? That's what I must have known beforehand. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, events have come to light that threaten the rock, the fiery foundation of our country's legal system. The escape of the condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of a man, and the revelation that the prison staff must have been complicit. In the jailbreak. Britain is currently hosting influential members of the history from countries all over the world. It is imper imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. And one over which I, Mile Strongheart exercises total and unequivocal authority. The, the six church slams just. As was the case in yesterday's proceedings, those here present in the public gallery are distinguished members of our judiciary, assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial proceedings. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. On a personal note, I find this most distressing in Lord Fans, most distressing Lord Man Six. You were a prosecutor of exceptional talent, much like your brother Clint, in fact. Oh god, the gobble sounds different! In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. For the trial of Baron Van Six, who officially stands accused of murder. And so, of the prosecution and defense, are you in full readiness to proceed? 
the defense is trying, my lord. As is the prosecution. Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a side to the victim, Inspector Topaz Grayson, that was unknown to his appearance at Scotland Yard. Yes, he is carrying out operations in secret, but Scotland Yard knew nothing about. And in these clandestine operations, he had an accomplice, Mr. Deli Burden. Virgil, who would be given the inspector's identification and presenting himself around the capital in order to establish a bias for Grayson. In that way, Grayson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work when in fact he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Virgil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear his buried memories of the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation. Because whilst he was engaged as she warden a Barclay prison, he had better the convict escape. Mr. Virgil is currently reoccupying at St. Seymour Centers. He recovered enough to give a signing statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. He is formally admitted to posing as Grayson whilst investigating in the Red Headed League. Which brings us to the crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed a suggestion that the victim may have been killed one day earlier. This was based largely on the discovery of the victim's pocket watch had not been won. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, Prosecutor Osogi. I once met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that the suggestion could not be ruled out. It's entirely possible that Inspector Reason was killed on 31st of October, the day before his body was discovered. I have here an updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday. The time of death was 5 p.m. on November 1st. There are indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. That's out of the question. There are no refrigeration devices in that part of London, large enough to accommodate a human corpse. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. Yep, there's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The corporal accept the new report as evidence. However, if this update report is deemed to be accurate, it would give renewed significance to the movements of the victim the day before the Francis Street incident. It would, yes, especially since on that day, Inspector Grissom was using Mr. Fergal to cover up his real movements. It's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Do I sense that the prosecution has some information regarding those activities? Scotland Yard put an enormous effort into investigating the, pre the precise matter yesterday. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigative work. So the prosecution calls us first witness now. State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Jane Lashier reporting. Representative of Scotland Yard. A self confirmed rank. But never mind. Gina, again. What's your problem, Odo? What's with that, Gina? Again. Look, eh? Ah! The boss met the wall to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Oh, Inspector Grayson, you mean? He got me out of the back slums 
So the SN and took me under his wing. Taught me to life out of purpose can have a purpose. That's why I'm the best part to be standing here speaking for him. Oh Gina. Right. All out of the goodness of Grayson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Shoom's. No. What's relevant to those, these procedures is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation yesterday. It is revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. A face. Oh, Shanghart knew. So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir. All right, we'll do this testimony and we'll wrap up. And across the sanitation there. All yard detectives are supposed to be fo following an to follow orders and investigation what they told. That they are told. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook on that little with secrets meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some mu smuggled good dealings that day. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't on to it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses what saw the Reaper at that place too. Smuggle goods? I don't know, do I? I keep telling you what's written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicine, goods of all. Which flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they dispose of regular black that are supposed to at regular black markets and take place that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. So Inspector Grayson was investigating one of those black markets. It's been suggested that high ranking of government officials may be involved in black market activities. Note that Grayson was trying to avoid details of his investigation being leaked to the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority, but the arch knowledge. And uh, do we know where the dealings were taking place this time? In the particular room of a certain exclusive London gentleman's club. And on the day in question, the accused is known to have been there. That that's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigation into the matter. That can't be! I haven't heard anything about this. I'm sorry, we haven't heard anything about anything about any of this. <laughs> Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question, the accused Baron von Six was present. That would be very significant testimony then. Oh my, but, but... Lord van Six made no mention of this at all. In short, Lord van Six had ample opportunity to murder the victim. I'm not going to use that. I've heard farewell, Council of the Defense, begin your examination. I have heard that Gruffle slammed down for over for at least 10 years if I remember serves. I can't remember when I played the first season attorney. That is a different Gruffle sound, and I don't think I'll get used to that. <laughs> 10 years I've heard that gr the old Gruffle sound. Okay. Hold it. So you followed orders, do you, G did you know? Nah, not me. I'm above all that. See. Oh. The boss always had special orders for me. Grab us some fish and chips, or go and get Toby his grub. That kind of thing. To errands more than orders, then. This detective is still an apprentice, after all. Yeah, well, this apprentice ain't 
you want to sit around and wait to be to what to do, even by the boss. That's why I've been doing my own investigations into what, what happened. I didn't find much at first. So you went for Inspector Grayson's things? Yep! As part of your of the independent let's trade investigation. And I'm sure your superior yours would be delighted that you're taking the initiative. So I snuck under his office when no one else was about. Because if anyone at the yard had seen me going in there, they have toughed me straight out of the street, under the streets. This is sounding less and less like an investigation and more and more like something else. Prosecution understands that it was this very detective who discovered the notebook. You got that right! Nothing gets past Inspector Lestrade and your trusting assistant, Chief Inspector Toby. He found it in, in one of his desk drawers that had a false bottom. That's impressive. So I went in him myself where no one else could find me, so I got a but journal one. And that was written in it. But if anyone at the yard had found me out. They have me tough me on tough me on, on the street. Uh, <laughs> I given then Yeah, I've given in in I don't went there. Eh? And if it weren't for me, it wouldn't have been fine at all. It wouldn't it would never have been fine. Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yep. It was all there in the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Um, as I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at a gentleman's club. Yes, I remember. I was supposed to find out the name of the club. That won't be necessary. What? It's concealed that the club might have been used again by smugglers in the future. In future, therefore, the prosecution has been asked not to reveal the names of these in these proceedings. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's right here. All I gotta do is read it out, and I could have, and I could too. I've got this reading game buttoned up now. I have to show you what I can do. Come on. What's the arm? Judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. I'm trying to find out. What should I do? Here, let's insist. This is a closed court. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. As I explained, there are, so there are some possibilities of pol politicians being involved in this affair. Prosecution is rightfully certain caution, I imagine. No, my lord. Prosecution has no objections. Asuma. There's no question that Inspector Grayson was looking into these stock market dealings, however. It's not yet been established that he ha he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defense quit requires the new club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstructive. Right then! I get the show of my reading skills! Apparently the smuggled good deals were gonna happen at a gentleman's call called the Grease. Hold it! The Grease? What's our club at start? I ain't got the foggiest. Clubs aren't exactly my thing. But, I am kind of curious. They are not places where a foreign student like you would be readily admitted. Have you looked into him? Have you looked at a mayor recently? I'll tell you what! Me and Chief, 
Inspector Toby could go in undercover. Did you do? I could pick up a few marks and see what else I could find out whilst I'm in there. I really don't think I sh you should go picking at anything. Anyway, that's where these black market things were going to take place, is it? Yeah, it's gotta be. That's what the lower ranking detectives at Scotland Yard reckon. Says the even lower ranking detective. Though I want to double check something. Holy crap, I didn't know you did that. Oh no, that's useless. And there are details with the whole- Oh, is this is all back here then. Never mind. So how had Inspector Grayson come to find out about that, about it in that case? That's the question, ain't it? But I'm just an apprentice, so... And why didn't he inform Scotland Yard of his findings? Yeah, that's what I was asking myself. Because, you know, I'm just an apprentice. Can I suit you? Yes. Anyway, the point is, something went on at that club, no question. You can't say that for certain though, surely. Hold it! Lord Fan Seeks was at the club? He was. The detectives who visited the club yesterday to make inquiries have confirmed it. Several members have, have been seen the accused being admitted to a room in question as a guest. Looks as though there's no disputing that he was there then. Well, we know that Lord Fancy was investigating Lord Inspector Grayson, don't we? Perhaps he already discovered the Inspector's secret notebook. It's led him to the club, you mean? Maybe. Presumably then, there were also eyewitnesses who can testify that Grayson was there. None have been identified at this time, no. So the all-important victim wasn't seen at this mysterious club. Oi! Why ain't just Inspector Lestrade here, eh? But that's all I've got to work with. Venus not holding back with that ice cold star of hers, is she? I really don't know what to make of all this. Lord Van Seek told us he was, he was investigating Inspector Grayson. But he never once mentioned that he met the inspector the day before the incident. You don't think Lord Van Seek's could have been lying to us, do you? That's not the only way to explain this. Oh? If everything Lord Van Seek had told us is true, there must have been a mistake in this testimony somewhere. You mean... There were details we've yet to uncover? Exactly. Play perhaps. I mean, Gina hasn't noticed. And that's what we should be looking for here.
You know? One of these... this and see what happens. This is wait for a little bit. Okay. Maybe something in here. Let's check the passport. Yep. There's clearly something I'm missing. It's definitely with the evidence we have. It's this. Wait, let's try this with the chest. Objection. Not the chest. Hello, the council. As a council events, I must reject that last been. And as a judge, I must deny your objection. There's no contradiction here. Oh. No contradiction, other than the fact that a Far Eastern lawyer is practicing in a British courtroom. Put Thoroughbred not so far away, Lord Chief Justice, if you remember. Objection. Not the passport. I feel like that's the statement. Not the notice board. Okay, maybe try to pick this one. Thank you. 
Hit no. Well, let's check the notebook this year. Okay. Never mind. The game don't, don't give me that information I didn't need it then. Be stupid. Objection. Apparently not stupid. That was the that was so weirdly set up too. Objection. Oh wow! I read about these clubs that assist here in Britain, and I understand that their place was where weld to the gentlemen so slash with friends and colleagues. Don't imagine for a second that a foreign student like you would be admitted. Seriously, is, the, is your mayor cracked or something? Do we know for sure that the contraband dealings were definitely happening at a club called the Groose? The police are currently looking in looking for evidence, but haven't found anything that def anything definitive yet. Well, I'm sorry to say that they probably won't. What do you mean by that? I mean that the police inspector Grayson was secretly going to visit on the 31st of October. May not have been a gentleman's club at all. You're showing a very irrelevant attitude towards our country's police force here, Council. If it were a gentleman's club, then what was it? A steamship. You think it's a ship? I have evidence to prove it! Here! Let me see that. This dark suited young man is not the least bit untrustworthy. Uh, um, other side, my lord. Be more specific next time! Ah, this would appear to be a ticket for a passage upon. A steam ship, yes? The SS Groose. Objection! So there's a steamship named the Groose that happened to share the name of the club. But I'm afraid that's to say there's a flaw in your logic there. Hi. Have a look at the ticket. Knows the date of arrival in port. The ship arrived at the Port Dover on 1st November. Ah! Oh! The date in which the sound like a gunshot was heard on Francis Street. In other words, on the day in question here, October 31st, when the victim was on his clandestine mission, the ship hadn't yet docked on British shores. That would be certain. That would certainly make an undercover investigation somewhat challenging. Objection. In fact, the scene ship hadn't yet reached Britain. Substantiates so the defense assertion that the victim was investigating the SS Cruise on the day in question. And show your evidence for that assertion. Very well. No, not used to that. In that case, counsel for the defense to present your evidence to the court now. Evidence that substantiates your claim that the victim was investigating the SS Baron February 1st. For on the October 1st. Take that! What's this? A passport for travel issued to the victim? 
Yeah, the 31st of October. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered, there was a distinct possibility that he wasn't even in the country. Order, order. This document is for Apache's, is for Apache's to France. This appeared to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS crews arrived at Dover, it stalked on the northern coast for, of France for the night. For night. According to my father, who was on board the at the port of Dun Duncan, Kirk, Dunkirk, France, what could possibly have taken effect them there? <laughs> I'm impressed, Bruno Sakanahoro. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You mean you knew about this? The prosecution strategy for this trial has been laid down by the Crown Prosecution Office. On the day before the incident, the victim was investigating the contraband dealings at London Club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation, and the line of prosecution has been asked to follow. But personally, I don't agree. I think the prosecution, the prosecutor's office, is trying to hide something. What? And now that you expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that to be. What are you playing at, Pro Prosecutor Sugi? A courtroom is a form of the truth. For the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts, without exception. Let me guess. This was your intention from the outset, wasn't it? The reason Inspector Grayson secretly made his way to the steamship docked in France on the day in question was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. That the Reaper? Order? Order? What are you saying? What are you saying, Council? Prosecution made an assertion in court yesterday. Inspector Grayson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret at Herrick, he was killed. And I'm sure everyone can imagine. By the Reaper's hand. But in reality, the truth is the opposite of that. What? Inspector Grayson wasn't investigating the Reaper at all. He was, in fact, acting for the Reaper. So, you're saying that the mission he was undertaking was... Obviously. An assassination. Baron von Six never carried out any of the actual killings. Whenever the Reaper's victims lost their life, he always had an iron ca a cast iron alibi. Which tells us that he must have had an accomplice. As you claim, that was Inspector Grayson. What the hell? What the hell do you think you're, you're saying, eh? My boss would never have done, have done nothing like that. And yet, when you consider all the facts, it all makes perfect sense. No! It can't be! We also arrived at the same collision, didn't we? And Inspector Grayson was operating as the Reaper. Even so, there's no way that the person giving him his orders was Lord Fan Six. No, the true Reaper is someone, somebody else. Our own Fan Six is not the Reaper. A predictable response from someone who advocating for the man and even if it's true that Grayson was operating as the engine as an agent of the Reaper the suggestion that he went aboard the SS Bruce on an assassination mission doesn't follow at all oh you have some reason for doubting the assertion do you counsel absolutely it's very simple on the day in question no one was killed aboard that steamship hmm Perhaps 
Professor Mikotawa and Judge Jukoku were on that very ship. If someone had been assassinated, I'm certain we would have heard about it. <laughs> What's so funny? You're right, of course. No suspicious deaths were reported on board the ship. But I think perhaps you missed the point. That's precisely why Inspector Grayson himself lost his life. What? Grayson did board the SS Cruise that night with the intention of dispatching his mark. But his mission ended in failure. Failure? It seems that the defense hasn't yet grasped the, a very important detail here. What are you talking about? Detail. Inspector Gina, let's trade. Eh? What? The victim's notebook that you read an excursion from earlier. That doesn't contain details of secret investigations at all. This describes 10 years of assassination plots to be carried out by the Reaper of the Bailey. You're lying! Even of all the book buggers got pleasures got would have gotten taken out. Alright, I'll come in. The boss weren't wasn't the weren't the Reaper. Poor Gina. There's no question about Tope as Grayson was heavily involved in the Reaper's activities. You may just be an apprentice. If you spent any time in Scotland Yard, you must have heard rumors. I ain't heard nothing. And I don't believe a word of it. And testify again. As a representative of Scotland Yard, consider it your chance to defend your boss. I I don't. I concur. The witness will give a new formal testimony. Jean, Miss Lestrade, you will tell the court everything you knew about Inspector Grayson's secret notebook. Yeah, this notebook does have, have lo a load of stuff about, about what the Reaper got up to these past 10 years. Names of victims, dates, and places and stuff. And our last entry he in here was 31st of October. It says Groose for the place on that date. And then the name of the mark. There was a note about, about I'm being a crimp. And being a criminal what got away from the Reaper in court 10 years ago or something. Come on. But honest, the boss didn't do none at all. None of it. It was... It was just investigating the Reaper, that's all. Keep personal opinions out of your testimony, witness. You require only established facts here. This must be so hard for her. Can't deny that, nice, surely. Unosaka Naruhodo. What can't I deny? The notebook contains the names of the final mark and the location of where the assassination would take place. That information that day... Sorry, that, that's information that the victim could only have known if he was working with the Reaper. Ah! So... Who was to be the final, this final mark? Go ahead, Inspector of the Street. Read the name for the court. The name that is written alongside the, fi the entry that mentions the Bruce on October 31st. It, uh, um. How do you read this, Dan? Reading some of her strong suit. That ain't the problem, right, Odo? It's a funny name. It ain't English. It's hard to read. So it's someone from overseas? Let me have a bash at it. Is that it? Is it? Yeah. Shin here. It's a hero. Jin. Go. Jin. Okay. You. Maybe? What? It. It can't be. Jin. Hero. Shin. Tashiro Jengoku? That's just Jengoku! 
Mishiro go Jingoku. Certainly not an English name, you're right. Objection. That can't be right. I know Judge Jingoku. I saw him the day before yesterday, here in London. I know for a fact that that man hasn't been assassinated. As I said, the Reaper failed. Oh. Grayson missed his chance to kill us, Mark, and returned to British shores. But the Reaper wouldn't tolerate his, the mistake. So we killed the Inspector. Personally. The Reaper, of course, being the accused. Baron von Six. It's an undeniable logical argument. Asuma. You planned for this child to go this way along, didn't you? Hold it! The foot's on the witness stand! Pray forgiveness for the discovery of filling my hollow chalice while I stand accused of murder. Morphan seeks! The accused has no right to speak unfighted in court. You will return to the dock. I s said nothing of, of whether or not I'm the Reaper. That's the task of this court to decide. But there is one thing I can say unequivocally. That girl is no detective. Eh? What? Nah, that's right, I ain't. I'm an inspector. Repeating rumors here heard around the yard. Reading entries from a notebook of unconfirmed origin. That's not testimony. It's practically a script. No doubt the rest of this trial will go exactly as you clearly planned. Your hatred of me is understandable. In your mind, I'm sure I'm the Reaper who sent your father to the gallows all those years ago. But you're in danger of becoming a far more cynical Reaper yourself by attempting to have me condemned with this feeble excuse for testimony. Did you say? It's not Horo. This is our chance. My lord, Panzer Kres that the defendant is be allowed to speak. He may be he may be primed to important information relating to the testimony just given by the witness. Very well. I'll make an exception and grant the request. The defendant may remain in the witness stand for the cross examination. And allow me to toast the court's impartiality. Don't raise your glass. Yeah. Don't raise your glass in my direction, sir. And so for defense, begin your cross examination immediately. At once, my lord. But next time. I think we'll save it up. We'll save it and leave it here. Friday, I can get back to this on s Wednesday. Don't know what's going to happen, so we're going to play this by ear as usual. Nonetheless, uh, if you watch this post later, who thanks for all watching this stuff, or if you just happen to watch this on the repeats and stuff, I uh, hope thanks for all tuning in. So we said good. It was a week. Uh, I'm still doing grinding some Monster Hunter, uh, base Monster Hunter, so I'm still getting that ready. So it's probably going to be for you. Actually, it's going to be more than likely for you because we haven't dead a free stream this month, so we want to get that out of the way. And then we'll just go from there. So with that all being said, I hope you have a good day, hope you have a good week, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!